Hello, quick vid on what is a spline and what is a spline mesh and what are they used for and how do they work. So a spline is basically a curve defined in any appropriate way. In this case, in most packages, you have control points which define points on the curve and you can move them around and the way you've defined the points uh, def makes the curve change. There's properties you can change on the splines such as the tangents and so on, but I'll show you that rather than try to explain it. So I can't produce a spline in Unreal just natively, but I've got a thing which uses a spline. So a spline is used to sort of... Uh, so in this case I am making spline meshes. A spline mesh is simply, simply in quotes, a static mesh that's basically a sort of 3D object which is applied to a spline. So this white thing here it's hard to see, <coughs> but there's a line here. That is the spline, and my little blueprint takes the static mesh of a wall and applies it to the spline. So you can move that around uh, in 3D space, but I'm trying to stick to the 2D there. So that's, you know, so what? But you could make another control point, and then uh, you can see the appeal. So you can create organic shapes using basic static meshes which are not which are rectilinear so all sort of 90 degree stuff you can deform it into a curve so it's easy to make the mesh because it's rectilinear and then it's easy to make a curvy thing with that and you can keep on doing this in various ways um, I think I've made a 3D one by mistake um, and so to manipulate these in Unreal you just drag them around with these things you can change the rotation you can change the scaling. This scales the tangents, which basically affects how much that control point affects the curve overall. You can get some silly effects by doing that, and that quickly gets out of hand. Um, and you can make new control points by just holding down Alt and dragging off another place. And you can see that the, the static mesh doesn't quite follow the spline. Um, and the way I've done that essentially is to chop up the mesh into chunks, and it will only have the resolution of the chunks and also it doesn't really cope well with sharp bends and things. Um, looks a bit rubbish but if I just build that it should then become a fully built mesh. There's some downsides to this technique. Um, it's difficult to optimize them. The best you can do is to uh, merge these meshes into a single mesh but these meshes tend to be quite big because they are chopped up into chunks so that they go around curves corners nicely. So now it's built. There we go that looks alright now. <coughs> uh, okay, so that's what a spline mesh is. You can use that to build elements. I use it for various things like road markings uh, for my onti level and others it'll be. So just following the road to put curves in. It's got some disadvantages of various kinds. We'll go into it. Um, and here's a sort of turbocharged spline mesh thing where I've got my basic spline mesh uh, like that one and I've created another blueprint that's a child of this which will add other spline meshes onto the basic spline mesh. This is how I've done my railway system. So each of these elements is a separate spline mesh and the clever bit of this blueprint is that it takes my original spline which defines this track bed and then when you add splines when you add things to it it generates another spline for each element uh, and that's important because I'm running trains along these and so for the train I just say take this element and use that spline so if I play it uh, in a minute you'll see a train come and uh, it was floating but basically it was following the spline and the reason you can't see that stuff is because I was tweaking this further so that it can optimize for uh, so you don't doesn't draw too much stuff so that if for example this stuff's not visible from the play area you can still have the train coming in from distance with the sounds being done correctly and then you get the track where you need the track this is just a tweak I've put in uh, I've other got other tweaks like uh, randomly varying the mesh it's using for each of the elements that kind of stuff so it's it's nothing super clever it's just iterating on a basic idea um, so spline meshes are quite good this is going to break it but let's see what happens so in theory if I can find a control point 
nearby. I can't. So I'll take that control point. So in white, that is the basic spline for the whole thing. If I move that, everything else moves with it because it's all locked into the base spline. So you can get extreme situations, you can play with the tangents, all that. That's basically the same idea. See, I've broken it. Uh, it's basically the same idea as that basic spline mesh, uh, but that is rather um, taking to extremes. Now here I've got a thing where it puts the number of the the mesh segment, which you can use to help determine the numbers you plug in to make things disappear and so on. But that's just a little tweak I'm working on at the moment. Um, yeah, that's spline mesh. So lots of things in the level, especially fences, walls, uh, roads are a specific kind of spline mesh. That is a landscape mesh, which is a it's tied into the landscape. That's a whole other thing. That's done by Epic. Um, but any curvy straight, any any curvy thing which is repeating meshes, whatever, that will probably be a spline mesh in a level. So there you go. That's spline meshes. Very useful. Very useful things. Bye.